I'm doing this video series because there is a 19.1 version of Apex now. I have a complete video series for Oracle Apex 18.1 and the current series will use Apex 19.1 and will follow in parallel with the same steps in the 18.1 series. So I have for software this time XE 11.2, Apex 19.1, SQL Developer 19.1. I will not walk through the steps of installing XE and upgrading to Apex 19.1. You can look at the previous video series and this particular video, Apex 00 of 30, if you want a demonstration of how to install XE and upgrade Apex. The steps of going from Apex 18.1 to 19.1 are the same. So if you want to work along, you can download and install Oracle Oracle XE 11.2, or you can use the most current version, which I do not have installed. You can download Oracle Apex 19.1 and go through the steps of upgrading to that. The one other thing that I have is I have also installed a translated version of Apex for Spanish. So if you're interested in that, you can go to the documentation. It's pretty simple to follow and pretty easy to do. But it's not quite as simple as I've seen on a few posts online. It's not just a matter of selecting a different language. You do have to install a set of support files, images, and other things that will provide the translated version of Apex. Once you've done that, then when you log in and go to, in my case, the local install of Oracle Apex, I can pick between Spanish and English. So if I look at my version of the database, as I told you, if I run this, then I can see that I do have 11.2 installed. I can go to SQL Developer Help About and see that I'm working with version 19.1. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to look more closely at some of the things that Apex has created for us when we generate a form with an interactive report. I want to point out that Apex is referred to as a declarative tool, which means that it generates a lot of the code to make these forms and reports functional. This means it's a low code tool. We should not have to do very much in terms of coding to make things work the way we want to, which I think is great. So we'll look at Page Designer and the things we can see about the report and form we created in the previous video. There are three sections in Page Designer, Rendering, Layout, and Properties. When we're looking in Page Designer at a report, we can look at the SQL code that generates the data that we see in the report. A report is a display of data. It is not interactive. So we also have a form, and a form is interactive. It allows us to add and modify data in a table. So the form is linked to a table in the database, and individual page items in the form are linked to individual columns in the table. We will see using Page Designer how we can display the primary key field in a form. We will also look at a feature in Object Browser that generates a lookup table. And this becomes a reference table that provides the items in a drop-down list or a pop list. It's a very useful tool. So I'm going to log into Apex as a developer. So I log in as the developer. And I can go to Application Builder and see what I've done so far. I have one application. And I'm going to run the application the first time in. You'll be prompted to log in. So right now we have a report. And through that report, we can open up a form. So we have two pages in the application. One of them is directly linked from here. The other one is linked through this report. 
So I click on list of animals and I see my designer options below. And what I want to do is go to edit this page so I can look at the properties and the features in Page Designer. We have three sections. We have rendering on the left. In the center we have layout, although you can choose other views. And to the right we have properties. When I select something over in rendering, such as the report, then I see the properties for that particular item. And so when I select report one, I see that it's an interactive report and it's based on a table or a view. This is the simplest report format because when we generated this report using the Apex Report Wizard or Page Wizard, we didn't do anything but take defaults. So we're showing all the columns from the table. If I want to see the SQL that would generate this, I could switch from table view to SQL query. And then I could click on this little window and I could see the SQL code that would generate the display of the data from the table. I'm going to click cancel and I'm going to go back to table view. Notice what happens though when I do that, the property needs to know what the table name is. So I need to go back to animals and then run that to make sure that everything still works. To get to the form, I would click the edit icon in the report for that particular record. So I'm going to pick Tori a pit bull. And I will click that and I'm looking at the form. If I want to see page designer, I come down here and edit this page. Your page number can be different from mine. The fact that it says page three doesn't really matter. But when I come over here to Page Designer in a form which is interactive, allowing me to interact with the data in the table, changing it, adding it, deleting it, then we see a different layout here in terms of how the form is constructed. So I select the form as a whole on the left-hand side, and I see the properties say this is a form, and it gives the source for that. If I select a particular item, such as the primary key field, and notice we do have a naming convention here. We have the page number, P3 underscore, followed by the actual column name in the table. So if I select a particular item, in this case the primary key, what I see is a slash here which indicates that the primary key field is not displayed in the form. What we saw first was category, and I don't like that. I think we should always see the primary key, certainly while we're doing development, because if something's not working, seeing what doesn't work right between the primary key and related foreign keys can be very helpful. So while I have this page item linked to the column animal ID, I'm going to come over here to its properties and switch to display only. That selection is off the screen, but you'll see it here in a second. So I want display only. That means it's not interactive. You would never alter the primary key. That is generated automatically by the database software. I would also change the label. If I don't change the label, I'll go ahead and save and show this actually. And I go run this report, then I see new, and I'm looking at a new record. Let me back out to the report and click so I'm seeing a specific record. So I don't want this to say new. I'll come back to page designer. That item is still selected, and I'll change this to animal ID PK and save and now run that. So when it comes to the form out of Page Designer, it's not keeping that specific record. I'll go back to my report. I will select it again 
So I see now the primary key value, but I can't click in here and change anything. I can change things here, so if I wanted to, I could add text. I'll not do that. Once again, for in Page Designer, when you click on something on the left-hand side, let's, such as Category or, let's say, Primary Color, which we're going to change here in a second, then I can see the properties over on the right-hand side. And if I scroll down, I see the source for this column. It is a column called primary underscore color. And this is case sensitive if we were to alter this. But we also get a selection so we don't have to type it in. So now I want to switch from here and go to the SQL workshop and I want to go to the object browser. I will do a right click and open that in a new tab. In animals, if I select that, I see several options such as add column, modify columns. A really great feature is I can create a lookup table and I'm going to do that for dominant breed. Before I run the create lookup table feature tool, I'm going to look at the data in the table. So we're seeing things such as pit bull, Labrador retriever, Chihuahua terrier, Chihuahua. I'm asking Apex to give me a unique list of dominant breeds from the data that's already in the table. So I will do create lookup table and I will select dominant breed and click next. Notice over here to the left the tables that we have right now. I'm going to take the defaults here and click next and create lookup. We now have another table, and that's dominant breed lookup. If I look at the data, I will see one record only for each dominant breed that we currently had in our database. So Beagle, Labrador Retriever, Pit Bull. And we see a dominant breed ID. There's actually an awful lot that Apex has done behind the scenes for us, but I won't go into all the details. But let me show you how this works. We see the dominant breed pit bull, which has an ID of 15. If we go back to the animals table now, we no longer see the dominant breed in text. But if we scroll out to the right, we see dominant breed ID. Well, our very first record for Tori is a pit bull. We've looked at that record, and we see the 15. So that's how the connection is made between the reference table, the lookup table, and the original table, animals, that had the text for dominant breed. I'll just briefly say one of the reasons we want this is we want to provide an input list so that people don't add animals and over time modify how they classify it. Somebody might put pea bull instead of pit bull, or they might put it together as one word instead of, rather than two words. We don't want that inconsistency. We want data entry to be very uniform wherever possible. We're going to use that to give us a drop-down list when somebody wants to enter in a new animal record. At this point, though, if I were to do a refresh on my form, I have an error message. If I, true, if I try to work with the report, I have an error message. So in modifying the underlying table in the database, I have broken things here in the application. Not a problem. Apex is great. I can remove these and simply regenerate a form with a report. We'll do that in the next video.